It was July in Chicago, and the lake was the coolest place to be. Eugene Williams, 17 years old, was in a makeshift raft on Lake Michigan when he accidentally drifted across an invisible line to the white part of the lake. A white man on the bank spotted Eugene and started throwing rocks at the raft, and Eugene fell into the water and drowned. Eyewitnesses told the police exactly who threw the rocks, but the police refused to arrest him. Riots broke out that day in 1919, and gangs of white rioters ripped black people off streetcars at busy intersections and beat them with their fists and with makeshift weapons. The violence lasted almost a week. 38 people dead, 23 black people dead, 15 white people Dead, more than 500 injured, and more than a thousand black people left homeless after their houses had been burned to the ground. And Chicago wasn't the only city in turmoil that summer. There were more than 25 uprisings in America that bloody summer. Why did this happen? How do we prevent it from happening again? These are the questions that Governor Frank Loudon wanted answers to. And so he appointed a commission, six black men, six white men, to answer these questions. Three years and 672 pages later, what did they find? Listen to this. Negroes are more commonly arrested, subjected to police identification, and convicted than white offenders that on similar evidence, they are generally held and convicted on more serious charges, and that they are given longer sentences. These practices and tendencies weaken the machinery of justice and produce misleading statistics of Negro crime. But policing was just one facet of white supremacy that they found in all areas of existence in America in housing, in education, in employment. And the commission said Chicago needed more integration, more investment in communities, equal protection under the law. This is 1922, folks. Ninety-two years later, Chicago police officer shot Laquan McDonald 16 times in the back. 16 shots! 16 shots! 16 shots! 16 Two years later, a report comes out finding that the police have no regard for the sanctity of life when it comes to people of color. Black lives matter! Black lives matter! Black lives matter! The past is never dead. It's not even past. Between 2008 and 2015, 74% of the people injured or killed in officer-involved shootings were black people. How many kids were you killed today? And yet Chicago police's budget per capita has tripled since 1964. Even though crime has gone down, it takes up to 40% of the city's general operating budget. We've known the problem and we've known the solution. Now we need to do more than file the answers away in a drawer. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more about the history of racism and policing, check out the rest of our 100 Years of Racism and Policing series and use the comments section to ask any questions you might have on policing and racial justice in the U.S., 